I would like to invite Dr. Thomas Kaminsky, Project Director, System Technologies Division, Stiag Energy Services, Germany. He has 35 years experience in monitoring, simulation, and optimization of thermal power plants. His professional experience in this field includes project management for over 70 installations of online monitoring and optimization systems in India from 2003 onwards, and also in business development of international corporations. He received a PhD in design methods of fault tolerant systems from Warsaw Technical University. Please welcome him on the stage. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of my presentation will be use of the predictive analytics for detection of uh, tube leakages in steam generators. But uh, before I come to this topic, I would like to say some words about our company. Uh, we have uh, the headquarters in Germany. We are one of the biggest IPPs in Germany with turnover 3.6 .6 billion euro. Uh, six and a half thousand employees and uh, seven and uh, six thousand installed megawatt. We operate power plant uh, as well. We are a global company with uh, our offices all over the world. Uh, the this, uh, subsidiaries were set up uh, pretty long ago. One of the oldest subsidiaries is a subsidiary in India which was established 2001. We operate on the five continents. Uh, what makes us unique? First, we have the German engineering from one leg megawatt. We have the huge experience in erection of power plants, operating power plants, modernization of power plants, and of, of course, because we are in Germany, into flexibilization of power plants and uh, preparing operation of power plants in the new scenario, flexible scenario, after 10 around of energy in Germany. We have as well operating and maintenance experience for uh, third parties uh, plants and uh, we uh, make this ONM for over three and a half uh, thousand megawatt, that is full scope ONM, and uh, three and a half thousand megawatt support uh, ONM for the other customers. And uh, I come from the area which, uh, of my company, which uh, develop, develops uh, commissions and uh, uh, maintains IT solutions for the power plant. So this combination of these three areas, IT solutions which were developed for our own power plants, especially in uh, flexibilization scenario, make us unique because we, can, we have experiences not only in the other power plants, but on, in our own plants. And we take, of course, a lot of uh, advantage for the domain knowledge of our engineering services. Uh, I would uh, like to mention only that uh, for, for this slide, that we of course uh, operate uh, conventional coal based and gas based uh, power plants, but uh, we are active in the dismantling of the nuclear power plants. You probably know that Germany decided after Fukushima accident to switch off all nuclear power plants. It's a huge amount of work. We are active on this field as well. And of course, because of the renewables in Germany develop very fast, we have already 40% of all generation came from new re renewables, mostly wind. Solar doesn't play such important role. So we are, of course, active on this field as well. Uh, we have, the, as I already mentioned, the subsidiary in uh, India with over 1,500 employees in offices across India. And we have engineering experience for 30,000 megawatt projects, including R&M. 
We are always an O&M contractor for large coal-based power plants and gas power plants. Over 6,000 uh, megawatt are operated by, by us. And uh, especially because I came from this area, I wanted to, to mention the IT solutions which we provide. We are absolute leader in the providing performance and optimization systems. Uh, 140 <coughs> units, uh, will, uh, part of them are already equipped, and the uh, rest will be soon equipped with our optimization system, PADO. For instance, all, almost all new NTPC, power, uh, NTPC power, uh, power plant units are equipped with this system. Uh, here, I would like to mention that the uh, monitoring of efficiency of the units uh, is, was important factor, maybe still important factor, but the new aspect uh, due to the flexibilization uh, came into the picture and uh, module for the uh, lifetime monitoring uh, calculation and fatigue calculation became very important. Uh, additional to PADO, we have the 30 operating uh, training simulators which were delivered to the different customers. We have 80 thermodynamic uh, model tools, Epsilon, which we delivered as well. We have 20 distribution and transmission simulation tools, power, power factory, which uh, has been recently delivered. That is a new area which we are very much active. And we have, of course, other solutions like uh, for flexibilization, combustion optimization, and boiler tube leakages, what I will talk uh, later. We have the training center, which is approved by Ministry of Power for all types of the power plants, and we train in this power, in this training center, not only our engineers, but we train engineers from the other utilities as well. So that is a short overview of uh, Steak Energy Services in India, uh, with a headquarter in Noida. And, uh, sorry, I wanted to go further, not back. And now I come to uh, my presentation before I uh, talk about the tube leakages. For those of you who are maybe not from the power sectors, I uh, extra for, for them put this uh, picture of our uh, one of the modern, uh, most modern power plants. That is power plant Valzum with uh, 800 megawatt. And uh, on the left side of this uh, picture, you see the cross section of the boiler. And uh, in the boiler, we have the, a lot of heating surfaces, a lot of tubes that are many kilometers of tubes, which has the task to take the heat from the flue gas, which, uh, 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 which created during the burning of the coal, and they take heat from the flue gas and transfer this heat to, to, to the steam. And uh, uh, I mentioned this that you know where I am when I will talk about the tube leakages. The tube leakages in the power generators are the phenomena which uh, occur, uh, occurs not only in the German power plants but in Indian power plants, uh, and I would say all over the world. And the tube leakages uh, have a very uh, severe impact, of course, for the, for the operation of the power plant because they cause shutdown of the unit and uh, loss, of course, of the, of, the, uh, uh, of, of the power. And if they are not detected early enough, they cause uh, consecutive damages. Because if you see here in this area, we have, I don't know whether here in this area, we have this leakage in the tube. The steam is coming out from the tube, spread, is spreading over the other tubes, and the other tubes are very fast damaged by that as well. The main reasons for the tube leakages are is overheating, defective welds, erosion, and internal corrosion. And as I said, uh, this problem is very severe. In some power plants, we have the tube leakages even twice per month. So the uh, operators do everything possible to first, of course, to avoid these tube leakages, but it's not always possible because, uh, as example, 
the uh, plant is older, we have the erosion of the tubes, and uh, after some time, we will have the tube leakage anyway. So the, uh, one of the main tasks of the uh, operation team is to detect these tube leakages as fast as possible, plant, evaluate how big is the damage, plant the shutdown of the unit, and uh, prepare for reparation. So what is the standard approach uh, for uh, tube leakage detection? Standard approach is to detect the sound coming from the tube. And uh, the boiler normally is equipped with 15 to 30 sound sensors, cables, and evaluation computer. And how it works, the microphone should detect this whistle of the tube early, as early as possible. And the computer should uh, give the alarms to the operators the leakage occurred. Uh, here is a picture which shows where microphones are located. Already I showed one picture of the cross section of the boiler. Here with the green uh, 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 squares, the location of microphones is shown. And the microphones are located so that possibly the whole area of the uh, tubes is covered by, by this uh, microphone. So if I get the information from one microphone, the area where I should look for the leakage will be limited to the surrounding of this, of this microphone. This uh, acoustic leakage detection is a real change for the operators because the, uh, the system produces frequently false alarms for instance, in the German power plants, lignite power plants, the soot blowing occur, uh, occurs very frequently. So it is not easy to uh, detect uh, this uh, leakage, having only very restricted time between the soot blowing, because the soot blowing produces the same whistle sound like uh, uh, leakage. And we have to differentiate it is soot blowing or it is leakage. So it is not easy to uh, uh, find out whether there's real alarm or the false alarm. The, every alarm consumes uh, uh, time of the experts to find out whether the leakage really happened and to go to the boiler and find out the location of the leakage. So if it, if it, it takes, in some cases, even 24 hours for the inspection. So the detection of the leakage is delayed and the consequential damage occur. Uh, I would uh, stress once again that the, uh, even with such systems, finding out the leakage is not, not easy. And uh, now we come to the advanced leakage monitoring and alerting. And uh, uh, this system, which I will present uh, by you, the idea for this system was what is very, really amazing was uh, given by the customer who had uh, some system from us with uh, uh, some predictive analytics for evaluating the healthiness of the asset. Assets like condenser, pumps, or rotating components, they have such systems, they, have, they had such systems, and they had idea why not to use the system to uh, find out the leakages. So this is an example how the customer used practically sophisticated mathematical methods to solve their own problem. And the system which uh, was created uh, used the existing microphones. Signals of the microphones are transferred to the uh, existing system. Signals are transferred to, to DCS. There are the practical sound level for, for each microphone, which I shown in the previous sound, is transferred to DCS system. And uh, our system for tube leak detection take these signals and analyze the trend of the signals. How it is now done, I show you in, in this uh, uh, screen, and uh, we had today a lot of, uh, a lot of about uh, digital twins, artificial intelligence. Some of these uh, uh, terms can be used in the really micro scale here to this picture. 
Because if I uh, consider one microphone and uh, some surrounding of the microphone, environment around the microphone, I can build the digital twin which duplicate me behavior of this microphone and this surrounding in the case that I don't have any leakages. And that is done by uh, neural network. We built a reference model for the acoustic signal. Trend of the acoustic signal is shown here on the left side with number one. That's the actual acoustic signal. We built a reference model with a neural network that will be our digital twin, which will generate reference value, reference uh, sound value for this microphone. So I will ha have in this trend actual and reference value. And if I make the normalized acoustic signal, which will be the quotient between actual value and reference value, I will see how the microphone signal should behave in the case that we don't have any leakages. Uh, and the next step, which is applied to uh, this method, is a statistical method which will analyze the trend, which analyze the changes of the trend, and will signalize the behavior of the trend is abnormal. We have the, some anomalies in the behavior of the trend, and that will be our signal for uh, inf that will be our information that we have a tube leakage. And uh, uh, as I said, this method was, the idea was given by the, one of the biggest uh, customer which, uh, where we uh, installed the other system uh, at this location. And with our help, it was implemented in the first uh, unit. And the customer implemented in the six other units, uh, in the uh, five other units on this location, this system as well. And I give you now uh, some case studies uh, how the systems, uh, how the system has been used by the customers, what are the findings of the system. But before I start uh, talking about the case studies, I wanted to tell you what are the, what are the other, uh, other two methods or the other method used in this location. The first method was the standard acoustic method with uh, standard equipment and the constant limits for the sounds, for the microphones. So if the sound limit is exceeded, uh, the system uh, suggests uh, the leakage. The other method which was used in the very long past, but is still used at this location, is balancing feed water and superheater uh, water flows. What does it mean? If I put the feed water to the boiler, amount X, I should get the same amount X, if I don't have the leakages, outgoing from the boiler. If I have the difference, then I, that is the indication for the leakage. But you have to imagine that we are talking about the flows 14 tons per hour, for instance, uh, feed water, and I have to recognize in this 40 ton, uh, uh, ton per hour, I have to recognize maybe half of the ton or even less ton leakage per hour at the beginning. So this task is, of course, by this method very difficult in the past it was not as a method, but it's still used at this location. And of course, we have this third method which we introduced, this predictive analytics method uh, with ALMA system. So the first uh, example uh, was about the leakage of superheater uh, three tubes in uh, uh, 20th August 2017. And uh, uh, in this example, by the way, the, all examples were given by the customers, was not made by us. In, during one presentation of uh, the system, customer gave these examples. And in this, uh, this uh, uh, example shows that the noise level uh, from the microphones exceeds the limit. So the, the traditional system shows there is a leakage. Fit uh, water balancing generates the alarm. And predictive analytics generate alarm as well. That is just a confirmation that our system uh, generate alarms uh, in any case where the other system generate alarms as well. Uh, he is only shown that the uh, feed water uh, uh, gives uh, here, that is this blue circle, 
uh, has some disturbance which indicates that the, the uh, uh, leakage is, uh, is there, occurred. Uh, now the next study is the, uh, the study which shows that the conventional system which uh, uh, generates, that is this black, that is uh, uh, this uh, black signals, uh, doesn't generate uh, alarms, these signals are below the limit. Fit water balancing was okay as well. Only predictive analytics with this trend gave the alarm very early, that is at this position, gave the alarm very early before the other systems gave alarm. That means the system detects the uh, tube leakage before other systems were able to, to do this. And it is shown here that, for instance, feed water balancing I show already is about the problem with this method, doesn't show any abnormalities in this, uh, in this range. Uh, the next case study, there are leakages on the superheater tubes, that is incipient damage of the superheater. The damage was so small that it uh, was even difficult by the inspection to find out this, this leakage. And neither noise level, noise level was much below the limit. Fit water balancing was okay, of course. Only predictive analytic general alarm long before any other system did. And uh, it is shown here that only alarm uh, uh, by predictive analytics uh, was generated by subtle increase of this, of this trend. And uh, uh, coming uh, now to the uh, summarizing of this uh, advantages of this predictive analytic approach, the system doesn't generate false alarms. Uh, we have the less consequential damage. That is huge support for the decision making. Should I go to the boiler and make the inspection of the, of the tubes in the boiler or not? I can uh, sh uh, plan better the down times of the uh, uh, boiler and the system generates uh, automatic notification by, by emails. So well, I wanted to stress once again that it's a good example how these artificial intelligence methods, mathematical methods, uh, are uh, entering the area of the plant operations and uh, the customers itself are able to themselves are able to use this uh, method and uh, make some improvements with this uh, method. These improvements, of course, are uh, done for the very specific problem when we heard about the uh, digital twins for the old construction sites. It is, of course, a totally different dimension. But uh, using this technology in the, even in the more less scale it can help a lot. And we are now in the uh, talks with the other customers in India as well to use this method and to improve the detection of the tube leakages, make this detection much earlier, because that was, of course, help and make the decision making easier, because that will, of course, help the operation of the plants tremendously. In the German scenario, where we have a huge pressure of, on efficient operation of the plants, this method now have much higher play much higher role than it was maybe 15, 20 years ago, because a lot of power plants, coal-based power plants in Germany, has been have been already switched off, decommissions. The number of plants is, as I said, much lower when we have already 40 percent generation by the renewables. So the existing power plants are under tremendous pressure to operate most efficient, and the people in the plants are very aware that the less efficient plants will be switched off the first. And with the new political trend which we have in Germany, that, for instance, the Green Party already got uh, in the last election 20%, and they uh, call very strongly to switch off uh, almost all uh, coal power plants as fast as possible. They say we have to switch off 20 most uh, dirty power plants immediately, then we see what is the magnitude of the problems which uh, this sector of industry 
faces, and for me this is just amazing. Uh, we talk about the digital transformation, but that this transformation uh, uh, affects practically the other industry, because who thought, I would say 20 years ago, that the coal-based power plants will uh, practically disappear in such country like Germany. The disappearing, of course, is not, uh, will be not so fast, because uh, I, we talk about the 40% of renewables, the capacity of renewables is much higher, but we have still the days in Germany when we don't have any wind at all. So the calls for the switching of the power plants are maybe a little bit premature, because in this case, the power supply will be not provided by the, uh, by, by the, by the utilities at all. At all. So that was uh, uh, that what I wanted to pass to you. And thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope that you got some view about some examples of digitalization of the less, less scale than we had before. Thank you. Good presentation. Yeah. Eh? Thank you. Thank you.